Hello and welcome to Let's Play George Foreman's KO Boxing on the Sega Master System. Um, this game is almost identical to Heavyweight Champ, except it's a bit easier. Um, there are only four opponents to defeat instead of five, and after every match um, we're given an extra point to play around with. Um, so if we win by knockout we get four points instead of three, and if we win by technical knockout we're given three points instead of two. Um, like my heavyweight champ playthrough, I'm going to be splitting this up into two videos. Uh, this video, the first one, will, um, it will have me complete the game on slow speed, and the next video, part two, will have me complete the game on fast speed, so I'm going to choose slow speed. And here's event one, and we're going up against F. Nelson. Um, the controls are identical to heavyweight champ. Um, pressing button one will throw a left, pressing button two will throw a right. Um, pressing down left um, will duck, pressing up up left will um, will sway backwards, round one. Um, pressing down will block low, pressing up will block high. Um, pressing down right while punching will do a body shot, pressing up, uh, pressing up right while punching will do an uppercut. And not doing any of those things will um, He'll throw a normal jab like this. Um, yeah, um, and if you hold both buttons down and let it charge up, you can do a power punch like this. But release only when the when the bar's at maximum. There we go. Um, yeah, there are only four opponents in this, and um, we get one extra point after, after after defeating the opponent. So presumably, I've never actually done it. Um, getting uh, getting a victory on points uh, will get us two points to play around with. But I've never actually done that in this game because it's too easy. Um, yeah, um, Sega Power. Um, they gave this uh, they gave this game one out of five, and. and uh, and I can quote what they said. They said, "Ah, how can Flying Edge release this pap? Or Sega approve it, um, for that matter? Uh, this is awful on a grand scale." Um, quote unquote. Um, I think that was a pretty um, unfair, um, pretty unfair review, really, because this is effectively just just an easier version of Heavyweight Champ, and they gave that game um, three out of five. Yeah, for some reason George Foreman uh, eats burgers, um, presum presum presumably made in his um, George Foreman's grills, if they were around yet, I don't know. Um, anyway, yeah, I usually found Sega Power's reviews to be fairly accurate. I mean, uh, my favourite games, Populous, Rasta and Wonderboy 3, um, and um, Sonic the Hedgehog 1 and 2, uh, um, it gave them 5 out of 5, 5 stars. Um, especially um, considering um, I actually think Populous is the best game on the Mars system and it gave that five stars. But um, in terms of longevity, it is definitely the best game. Um, um, at least in my opinion anyway. But yeah, um, in, in other games, um, um, I... Um, I have disagreed with Sega Power, such as Tasmania, it unfairly only gave it 2 out of 5 because, well, the reason it gave uh, um, Tasmania a low score is because it unfairly compared it to the Mega Drive version, which of course is going to have good, uh, really, uh, really good graphics and um, much better gameplay because Mega Drive was better than Master System, uh, mostly, but... Um, so it gave it two stars. Uh, Sega Pro magazine, different magazine, actually looked past that and gave it uh, a really high score. They did percentages, I think they gave it over 90% or something. But um, yeah, I think it was unfair giving Tasmania only um, only, only two out of five. It, it's a good game in its own right and it shouldn't be compared with the Mega Drive version really because the, the mass the system is not the Mega Drive and there's no reason on earth that you should compare the two. Um, uh, you know, the Master System had, had good games in its own right, and and they didn't compare, uh, they didn't compare other games to the Mega Drive counterparts. So they, they didn't compare Sonic One and Two to the Mega Drive counterparts. And of course, the Mega Drive ones had much better graphics, but they didn't do it with them. But they did with Tasmania, and they also gave, yeah, they gave this one out of five. Um, so I don't think that's a fair review, really. It is effectively just Heavyweight Champ, but um, just a bit easier.
Now they gave the Ninja, the game I'm going to be doing after this one, they gave that 4 out of 5, and I think it's only worth a 3 out of 5 really. It's a good game, it's one of those uh, early Master System games that have that early Sega charm, uh, like Transbot and uh, Kung Fu Kid and Black Belt. Um, but I, I don't think um, I don't think that the Ninja deserves uh, four stars. It only deserves three, in my opinion. But I think they they factored in the yeah they definitely did. They said it was only a tenner, and it was um, the Ninja was only ten pounds, nine pounds ninety nine, ten quid. Um, and and they considered that when scoring it because it was value for money. But I don't think they should have done that really. If it's a good game, it's a good game. They shouldn't compare it with the. Uh, they shouldn't consider that when scoring it, because you know that has n the price of it has nothing to do with the gameplay or, or the longevity of it. And while I do think the Ninja um, is a good game, it's certainly not. Um, I don't think it's worthy of um, four out of five, especially since they gave Wonder Boy only three out of uh, five, and I think that's a much better game than a Ninja. Um, although it is slightly repetitive, but um, yeah, I, um, I did disagree with um, Sega Power of, um, on a lot of their reviews. Um, they gave Wonder Boy in uh, Wonder Boy in Monsterland four out of five, which is a oh, oh good, I've got the TKO. Yeah, sometimes I think it's more easy. It's easier to get the normal knockout. I'm annoyed I didn't get the normal knockout in this uh, match. An anyway, Foreman wins. Yeah, they gave Wonder Boy in Monsterland four out of five, and Wonder Boy three five out of five, of course. Um, they gave Wonder Boy Monster World uh, only two, uh, only two out of five, and that's because they said it was, and I quote, too simplistic, which is true. I did complain about that in my in my video, um, in my playthrough of it. That was uh, it was too easy. But uh, Sega Pro, uh, Sega Pro magazine disagreed. They um, um, they actually thought it's really it's a really good game because of the graphics. It is a really good game, but it is too easy. But they were. I think they were uh, they were enamoured with the really good looking graphics of Wonder Boy and Monster Toy because it's very similar to the in, uh, um, graphic wise uh, to the to the Mega Drive version. Anyway, here's the uh, here's the second man, G Steel. Ah, oh, you annoying little critter! Come here, take that. You can maybe muck up my power punch. Yeah, this man can sometimes be tricky. You, you want to be careful with him. Yeah, be very careful with this man. Just keep pushing him backwards. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Good. And then just uh, um, don't muck around with him. Yeah, the first opponent I forgot to mention. I think he's called F Nelson. Um, like heavyweight champ. The uh, the uh, uh, the opponent names are completely generic. And if you notice, the music is the same as heavyweight champ music. Um, mostly, but it's sped up. The first, uh, the first match of this game was this was the music to the second match on the on the heavyweight champ. That's it. Do some body shots. There we go. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, the music's are very similar. It's effectively the same game. It just looks slightly different. I mean, the screen layout is different. Where the uh, um, where I mean, where the power punch bar is, for example, is on the top instead of at the bottom. I mean. Yeah, um, um, George Foreman, um, um, he is very impressive. He he won the uh, he won the title back. I can't remember from whom, but he won the title back. Well, uh, one of the heavyweight titles that is. I think it, um, I think it was the WBC title. I think uh, he won it when he was 45 years old, which is uh, extremely impressive. Um, I think that was after this game was made as well, which is even more impressive. But this was about his. Um, this game was released because of his comeback. He made a comeback in 1988 or 9 or something, and it culminated in him winning one of the championship belts in, which I think was a WBC. In I think it was 1994 he won it. Oh, he's maybe back up the other one as well. Take that for making me muck up my power punches. Oh, he's doing a power punch himself. Ah, oh, he got it. There we go, he's down again. Yeah, um, um, before I do the next video, I'll have a look. 
online and um, and find out against whom um, George Foreman um, won a title. I'll find that out. But yeah, uh, to go back to Sega Power, um, yeah, they were. It was very good. The magazines in those days, yeah, before the age of internet, really, which didn't really kick off till about the year 2000, really for me at least. Um, um, video game magazines were the only, well, and uh, and one's peers, of course, were, were the only source of information about video games. I mean, if you didn't, there we go. If you didn't read magazines, you I mean you could go to a shop and you, you could accidentally pick up Transbot, for example, and be really disappointed. So uh, the magazines were were a good source of information, but they weren't always right. They were, of course, just opinions, but it was a really good source of information. I mean, even in the days of the pl of the first PlayStation, PlayStation One. I mean, even then, the internet wasn't really that good for video game reviews. I mean, now you have um, loads of sites, um, and you c uh, and for these old games, you can read uh, game FAQs reviews for uh, um, for reviews about old games, cause, and then you can don't even have to buy them; you can just download them if you want to play them on an emulator. So. Um, in those days, when you you know you had you had very little money, like all you had was about thirty pounds, and you could only spend it on one game. You wanted to make sure you spent your money on a decent game like Populous or Wonder Boy 3, and not spend all your money on the likes of Transbot or or a game like Alf, for example. You know, or a game like Eastwatch, which is far too easy and would really disappoint me if I had bought that. If if I bought that when I was younger. Anyway, he's going down, trust me. There we go. Gets up at four. Can't believe he made me muck up two of my power punches. Yeah, I think this bloke is actually the hardest one. Uh, after this, uh, after this one, you, um, you get so powered up that the game is plain sailing, really. Oh, I, I tried to, uh, I tried to dodge that. Never mind. Doing it again, look. Uh, mucked it up, good. And now you can die. Come on. Making a comeback. Ah, oh, so close. Another ten seven round. Yeah, so my next video uh, series, if you like, after George Foreman's carry boxing, is going to be uh, the Ninja. That uh, that'll probably be a uh, that will probably be a two-parter. Um, because I think the game's a bit too long to do in one video. Um, so yeah, um, it'll, it'll be a two-parter. Then after that, I'm doing Heroes of the Lance. That'll probably be a one-parter because that's a very once you know what you're doing on Heroes of the Lance, it's extremely easy. I've completed it several times. But um, when you first play a game like Heroes of the Lance, you don't know, the manual isn't much help either. It's only three pages long. It looks really big because it's in every language under the sun. Even in, in like, it's in it's in Dutch, Spanish, Italian, Portuguese, whatever. But it's actually you can complete the whole game in 15 minutes. It's it's extremely easy. Um, Heroes of the Lance. Ah, oh, it's gone up again. Um. Yeah, so, so I'll be doing that one. Then I'd like to do some of the other early Master System games like Bank Panic, uh, My Hero, that's a laugh. Um, it's another one that never ends. Those two never end, but uh, Bank Panic and My Hero. My Hero is sort of like Kung Fu Kid, but um, not as good, and it never ends. But it has that, again, early Master System Sega charm that uh, Transbot has and the Ninja has. You know, um um, it's sort of um, the ma early Mars system charm um, can be defined uh, like um, Sega before Sonic. That's early Mars system, early 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 Sega charm really. 
Anyway. Um, Foreman wins. Event 3. Yeah, I am actually... Um, I didn't intend to, but I'm actually working my way through a load of Master System games. Like, yeah, I'm doing a lot of the library. I've done loads of it already. Um, I'll probably end up doing every single Master System game just because it's my favourite system. Right, here's G Brown. Right, I'm going to do a power punch and get him in, um, get him cornered. There we go, and another one. He should be easier than the previous opponent. There we go, that'll do. Right, let's get him. Stay back. Just need a corner, your friend, that's it. Go for it, there we go. Oh. He does like to duck a lot, doesn't he? There we go, he's down, finally. I always think this music sounds like... Oh, you made me muck up the thing. Yeah, I always think this music sounds um, it sounds a lot like if you remember Asterix, the music when you're on the ship and you have to grab onto that rope. I think it's that music anyway. Yeah, it, um, it sounds like that one. Anyway, he made me muck up one of the power punches. So, um, uh, um, I'm in a bit of bother. Right, here's round two. Stop ducking, it's annoying. Damn, he can duck a lot, can't he? He wants a Rocky from Rocky 3, where he dodges on that film. Anyway, now you're mine. There we go. I'm going to torture him. I'm going to crucify him. Real bad. No, because he's... Um, because he's gotten up at 8. Good, he's been nice and easy. There we go. Stop ducking, it's annoying. Just take your pounding like a man. Gets up at five, unbelievable. Uh, it looks like it's going to be another technical knockout. I do find this game easier to get a um, a normal knockout, um, a proper knockout on. I haven't seemed to have done it um, in, in this video, but it is much easier in my experience to get a proper knockout on this game rather than heavyweight champ. I might do later on, further down the line, a video of James Buster Douglas knockout boxing, but I didn't see the point because, well, I don't see the point now because I might just do it for completion's sake. There you go, that's the TK. Yeah, if I am going to do every single Master System game, but it really is just heavyweight champ, except it says Buster Douglas instead of instead of S Davis. That's all. That's the only thing really. And it has Buster Douglas' uh, name on the title screen. I think, and a picture of him. Right, here's the title bout. As I told you, there are only four, um, only four matches in this one. And normally, I didn't get any proper knockouts, so I'm, I'm, I'm low a bit on the old, uh, on the old, uh, um, on the old points here. Um, I'm gonna make it sound nice and rounded. There we go. Yeah, but I probably will do James Buster Douglas knockout boxing eventually, but it is... I mean, at least this is slightly different uh, um, from he heavyweight champ. Uh, Buster Douglas knockout, do um, knockout boxing is just... 
Yeah, his name's T. Lewis, and he's really easy. There we go. Ooh. It is just exactly the same game as Heavyweight Champ, with exactly the same sort of uh, opponents. At least this one has different names of opponents. No, he's not letting me do it. There we go. Come on, take your pounding. This, uh, this one, T. Lewis, reminds me of one of those Victorian era boxers. The ones who always had nice moustaches, yet were really muscular. Or maybe those um, circus tough men that used to lift loads of loads of weight and everything, because because you know, weightlifters weren't very common in those days. So, this, um, so they were circus acts, really, like a bearded lady, but they always had nice moustaches. Anyway, I digress. I'll do a power punch. Oh, he made me muck it up. Right, not the oh, he's done it again. He's done it again twice. Right, you're gonna pay for that. I'll make you trim your moustache, you made me muck up two power punches, you little swine. It's so easy to muck them up though, it really is. There we go, he's down. Don't really need the power punches. Is it me or is this the slowest count ever? I mean, it's about as slow as the one that uh, that Buster Douglas won, won on. When, when Buster Douglas was knocked down by Tyson, he he won the match, but he was knocked down. Um, Tyson after afterwards and his and Don King moaned for ages that the count was slow, but they gave exactly, but the referee gave the same speed count to Tyson when Tyson was knocked down. So, and at the end of the, the at the end of the day, it is at the referee's discretion how fast the count goes. So there's nothing they could do about it. It was a fair fight, so um, Buster Douglas won it fair and square, but they'd moan about it for ages because Don King moaned about it. Did you notice how T. Lewis just looked like a lighter version of George Foreman there? His sprite was exactly the same as George Foreman's, except it was lighter, and he didn't have a moustache, even though he clearly has a moustache there. I think he does, anyway. Yeah, I'm sure that's a moustache. No, he's down. Oh, I actually have uh, a power punch left. I might as well use it. I didn't realise I did. Yeah, but Buster Douglas won that fight fair and square, so there's nothing they could do about it. And he was the champion, but he lost it to Evander Holyfield. Um, he's one of those fighters um, who just wanted to win it once, there we go. And then that was it, and then his hunger went, and then he didn't really care anymore. And he went into obscurity afterwards, so he was only a champion very briefly. But the fight against Tyson, I, um, I recommend you watch that, it's excellent, he knew exactly what he was doing and uh, he knew exactly how to handle Tyson perfectly. Really good fight. He knew he gets knocked down once by Tyson, but, but he got up and he knew he was getting up anyway, he was just waiting for the count to reach 8 and then getting up. He wasn't, it wasn't like he needed the count to be extended by the referee being slow. He, he knew. He knew what he was doing. He's finished. Goodbye, T. Lewis, or Louis, TKO, and I'm the champion. There we go. That's the end of Easy Peasy George Foreman's KO Boxing. On slow speed, at least. Foreman wins. And then we get the credits. Congratulations, and we get a picture of George Foreman this time. Um, I didn't have a message like last time on uh, Heavyweight Champ. It has the same music that reminds me of the ending of Sonic 2, the sad ending on the Game Gear version, but the only ending music on the Master System version for some reason. I, don't, I do really like that music. Anyway, thank you, um, thank you very much for watching. My next video is going to be this game on fast speed, so I hope that you can watch it. Um, and I will see you then. Thanks again, and bye-bye.